ha pa 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 ha da ka pa pa ta pa 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 ha da ka pa pa ta pa ta pa 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 ha da ka pa pa ta pa 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 And hello everybody, this is another episode of Pokemon Mini, but this is the first Pokemon Beasts Mini. So yeah, this is going to be featuring the first mammal in the series. To be honest, I don't know why I say that accent, you know. Like, do you ever notice that with YouTubers? They just, like, go, they, go, they go up like this and then down like this. Just so, I don't know, maybe just to grab your attention. I have no idea. What is up, you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and welcome back to another video. So hit that subscribe button for more creepy content, just like this. Introducing the first pseudo-legendary in this series. Accent. I, I can say why. I mean, it's just too noticeable for me. And also, um, it might have been a while, but yeah, by the time this video is up, it would have been quite a while. But um, about four days ago, it was Valentine's Day, so I hope everyone had a great day. And yeah, for all the lonely singles out there, I feel you. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, let's get the first Poke Beasts episode sorted. So let's start the video. There is going to be a lot of facts attached to this thing. Anyway, so yeah, what's, what a great way to start this series with the most popular prehistoric mammal of all time. Or well, one of the most, I mean, it's debatable. But this is the Smilodon, or as a lot of you may refer to it as the Sabertooth tiger um so yes many of you would think of this as a saber-toothed tiger but it's actually neither a tiger or even closely related to it it was in fact in the acheridonts group massive error the actual name of the extinct subfamily is maturodontony of the family felony not making smilodon a feline but if you were to compare this animal to a cat of today, it is speculated that they are more closely related to lions and cheetahs rather than tigers. I bet you feel stupid now, huh? Extra note, the tiger comes from the Panthera tigris family. The Smilodon's most prominent feature, their one foot long sabre teeth were very brittle, surprisingly. Yeah, that, that's something you wouldn't expect. Big teeth would be so frail, but apparently they are. And once one of those teeth are broken, it is said they would never grow back. So that'll make things edgy. As well as this, Smilodon's jaws were pretty weak as well. For such a large animal, that is. The combination of the teeth and jaws means that this animal couldn't really bite down with much force. Despite this, Smilodon was able to take down its prey without any problem. Paleontologists believe that Smilodon hunted by jumping down on its prey from tree branches like jaguars, landing on its prey and sinking its teeth into its neck to then leave its prey to bleed to death. However, this isn't true for a particular kind of Smilodon, Smilodon Populator, although it should be called Popular because it's very popular. What was that? Yeah, I, I that know, was it's terrible. a bad joke. Don't do that again. I know. Even the Smilodon didn't like it. Just stick to your amateur narration skills. Shut up. This particular kind of Smilodon was too big to sit on trees, so it could have hunted by jumping from rocks. So similar to how modern lions and tigers hunt today. There are two areas to support this theory. The first is the paleopathology of Smilodon's remains. Many of these specimens show signs of injuries to bones and the areas of muscle attachment that were too serious that they would take weeks and even months to heal and would have been enough to prevent a Smilodon from actively hunting. In solitary creatures, these wounds would mean that the animal could not hunt and would actually starve to death. But many of these Smilodon specimens show that they healed. This means that the injured Smilodon had to get its food from somewhere while it recovered. And one explanation is it was supported and fed by other members of the group. 
This behavior can be observed in Prize of Lions today. There's a debate whether or not Smilodon was a solitary cat or if it hunted in packs. Some of the fossils that have been found were cats that lived into old age. Since they wouldn't have been able to do that without some protection from the pack, it is likely that Smilodon may have lived in packs. I have no excuse. The artist gave me pronunciations for these Pokemon, so I can't say, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, he's literally written it down. Thank you. These cubs are very playful and energetic, which tends to lead them to injuring themselves and each other. The most common injuries that occur are chips, claws, and fangs, but such minor injuries will heal within a couple of minutes. This is the first ice type in the Pokemon creation series, Antarticub. And this little guy is really cute and looks like a actual cub of a big cat, like a lion cub or tiger cub. Seriously, Game Freak is overdue what about for- Raikou? Oh, wait, no, no, I'm not counting Raikou. No, we still want a saber-toothed cat yes, is. that isn't a legendary. Also, Raikou doesn't even- people still say it's a dog. I mean, even Game Freak said they are based off cats. Although, I don't know Suicune's based off a cat, it looks more like a horse. Well, from the head anyway, I, don't, I have no idea. It just looks like a horse with paws. So, as you would have guessed, I'm not going to talk much about this little Pokemon as, you know, you, you want to hear more about the final evolution stage. So, Antarcticub has a decent stat range for quite a little cub, but it has a bit more focus on attack and speed. So, I would suggest using this thing as a physical attacker. But you can use some special ice moves for diversity and a little bit of stab. These powerful Pokemon often hunt in packs of three, bringing down prey much larger than itself. Their large, long fangs have been known to pierce skulls, crush bones, and tear through flesh. It's like a horror movie! And, oh my gosh, I love this design. It works so well with just a Smilodon Pokemon. And, yeah, the icicles with the fangs are just a perfect combination. That and the ice crown on its head just makes this thing a king to rival Tyrantium. And yes, I know South America isn't really Antarctic, but you know, I, I still think it's fine to just mess around some ideas. I mean, heck, Lego Dilophosaurus. Anyway, yeah, I do think this is really well executed and really well fused with the ice typing. Despite what you think, and even I was surprised when I looked at the stats, this Pokemon has a greater special attack, but also has a pretty good offense as well physically, but also has a bit more of a physical offense as well. And it's also quite fast and has a fair bit of bulk. Its abilities Strongjaw and Berserk really help this Pokemon offensively. Strongjaw, on the other hand, specifically boosts the power of biting moves such as Ice Fang and Crunch. So you get a good amount of power, but also that additional effect of flinch, freeze, or lowering your opponent's defense. But I prefer Berserk on this Pokemon as you know, this Pokemon has a better special stat, and is really good against an opposing sweeper, especially if you give Siberia War a Focus Sash. So your opponent attacks um, your defending Pokemon, and it really does give a massive punch in return. I think the best offensive moves for, for Siberia War would be Ice Beam or Blizzard for Stab, with help from Berserk. Blizzard would be good in doubles, especially if your ally knows Snow Bloke. Blizzard would be really good in doubles, as if your ally has the ability Snow Cloak, you'd be able to hit both your opponents with a really powerful move, sure to hit. Despite that, I would still recommend some physical moves like Earthquake and something to take advantage of its speed, like Agility, just for a little bit more of offensive diversity. Although if you want to like mess around your opponent a bit, uh, you can still go with Strong Jaw as Bite moves I think are actually not bad. And here are their shinies. It's been a while since I actually probably gave a good criticism, or just gave my own point of view about them. And I just love how the bright purple crystals really contrast the dark patches of fur. It just makes those crystals shine even brighter. I would once again like to thank Alphonse118 for doing the designs for this video. Um, by the time of recording this, I still don't know how to pronounce the name. But yeah, I'm just really grateful you've done another video. And yeah, I hope this is an example to anyone who wants to take part again, really. I hope you enjoyed that video. If there are any artists out there who would like to be in a future video, 
either mini or main, please let me know. If there's any mammals or birds that are extinct that you would like to see in a future video, comment below what we'd like to see. So if this video is up by Monday, then this Friday you'll be seeing the Pokemon Creations Explanation video, which I hope will be good. I hope it will be very clear, I hope it will clarify a few things, no idea. Also I hope it's engaging as well. Once I finish those two videos, I am going to be working on Pokesaur 3. I am so excited to get that done and hopefully it will be worth the wait. So continuing on from what I was talking about last week, the artist who was going to be in Pokesaur episode 3, I do admit it wasn't an easy decision to make. I was very patient but I just feel like... I don't want to say anything horrible but I just don't think it's fair to have one artist holding everything back especially since there's three other artists who have been kindly waiting. It has been a year, actually nearly two years now. Either way, I think it's long overdue, and to be honest, I, I really want to get this series moving. There's so much I want to do. So yes, I am hoping that's clarified a few things. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, and share it if you want. Also, because I'm not the most frequent uploader, please click the... Okay, a lot of people call it a bell, but I'm just going to call it the bronzong. It looks like a bell, really. And be sure to follow me on social media. And please be safe. Stay indoors. Only go out once a day, unless, of course, you're in the other part of the world where they say don't go at all, then just don't. I know it's depressing, but please don't. In the past, present, or even future, I... We'll see you there. Bye! See you at Pokesaw 3!